So, an executive Qatar flight has been spotted en route to London Heathrow. A lot of people think this is Sheikh Yassim or people close to Sheikh Yassim. What might this be? What's going on with the ownership situation? Are we going to get some clarity today? David Wright of Manchester United, United and Tottenham sort of linked to him. This is appearing as the latest news with Dean Henderson on the way out. Could United be spending that money on David Raya got some transfer news regarding him and of course the Kim Min Jae to United Stories reports coming in today from Italy that Kim Min Jae has an agreement with Manchester United but why is none of the British journalists or Romano not reporting this? Are United being used to give Kim Min Jae a big new contract or does Kim Min Jae really want to come to Manchester United? Well we're going to dive into the takeover news and then we're going to get into the transfer news people so please do smash that like button and of course subscribe down below if you're new so what was said a qatar executive flight has landed at heathrow airport this is what people are going crazy about people tracking flights on twitter a lot of people get all excited like it's happening it's happening i'm going to be honest with you guys this could mean absolutely nothing and the reason I'm going to say that is there's a lot of fake accounts, ITK accounts on Twitter that have, like, they've got like a, I don't know what it's called, it's got like a purple profile picture and the name is an Arabic and, and, and there's a few other ones similar where they keep putting information like Sheikh Yassim, blah, 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 is going to put another beard and Sheikh Yassim is putting a six billion beard and Sheikh Yassim is going to fly to Manchester and do this and do that. And, you know, they might get it right here and there or Sheikh Yassim is going to pay seven billion, they were saying, and, you know, the, Qatar will be the next owners, we've been told from inside sources. There's a few fake accounts on the internet that are spreading like news that they got a rumour from Wall Street that Darcy Glazer had told them that it will be Qatar etc 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 there's a lot of fake news accounts going on with this takeover and they know absolutely nothing now, i'm not saying the actual journalists know much because the journalists actually have a genuine source but the, they're being told that by the glazers by the rain group by the people around united so they are being told the info they put out for a reason so you know i'm not saying that the info they put out is true either but i'm saying there's a lot of accounts that are putting fake information out about qatar we want qatar qatar is what we want but I don't know if we'll get Qatar and, you know, just try and ignore a lot of the Twitter rumours. Just listen to Romano, Mike Keegan, the genuine journalists, even if it might not be true. But what is going on with the takeover? Potentially a Qatar flight going in. There was that Friday deadline. I believe the Glazers are in London. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. But there could be some kind of meeting between the Qatar and the Glazers today on Friday if they, they have flown in. It is a bit, you know, um, what's the word, coincidence that that is the date that an important Qatar flight has gone to London. However, Qatar owned a lot of London. Qatar have got a relationship with London. There's a lot of important people from Qatar who do visit London. So there's, there's also different ways to look at it. But I think that Qatar and the Glazers will have some contact today, um, potentially talk about some things. And I think if we don't really hear anything tonight on the Qatar front, I have a feeling that it's going to surge him. I really want Qatar to be the next owners um, and I'm hoping that a lot of the news was just a play to get Qatar to bid more. But from what I'm hearing from the reliable sources, I have a feeling, guys, that it is unfortunately going to Sir Jim. But it's not over yet. Nothing has been agreed. Sir Jim has not been announced into an exclusive period. So fingers crossed for Qatar. The worst part is if we don't get Qatar, they could go and buy Tottenham Hotspur or West Ham or another club. And then the Premier League top seven with Newcastle turns into a top eight. And we fall further and further behind. We have an opportunity to be brought by really rich owners. And we don't think, as long as they don't buy Liverpool though. If they buy Liverpool, that is the worst. Anyway, what was said regarding Kim Min Jae? Because there is news coming out that United have an agreement with Kim Min Jae. I'm going to start with what Romano has said on Kim Min Jae at the moment. Romano said, Alex, Ax sorry, not Alex. Axel de Sassi is a part of a plan B option. Kim Min Jae remains United's top centre-back target. So for Brito Iran, it's only really said about Kim Min Jae is our top centre-back target. We've had some talks, we've been looking at him, we've been monitoring him. We've put Kim Min Jae on our centre-back list since October. He is our top centre-back target. What else was said by um, another decent source? It was said Axel de Sassi is at the very top of Manchester United's list. The club have already met his entourage and Kim Min Jae is there. And also, a, and a verbal offer has already been made to the player. So reportedly, because we were linked to this Monaco centre-back, another good source has said, yep, he's at the top of our list with Kim Min Jae, but apparently a verbal offer has already been made by Kim Min Jae. And that's come from two reliable sources that we trust. The only worry is if, if Man United have had some contact with Kim Min Jae and United put Kim Min Jae at the top of their list, as we know Romano's confirmed, 
it's very easy for Kim Min Jae and his agent and people in Italy to spin that Kim Min Jae is going to go to United to get him a new contract, which could be the reason behind reports in Italy saying that Kim Min Jae has already chosen to join United and Kim Min Jae has made the decision to join United um, and all of that because it could be his agent to make a play to get him a really good new contract at Napoli. So, you know, because if you actually read the news, it'll say, yeah, Man United have offered him nine million a year. Kim and Jay can't say no. You know, if you actually read the news that Kim and Jay decided to join United, they keep talking about the, the crazy money we're giving him, apparently, that we've offered him. Um, and, and I sometimes think, oh, could this just be a play to get Kim and Jay a big new contract at Napoli? It was also said Manchester United have known about Kim and Jay for a while. And although he has a release clause, sources have played down the prospect of an approach at this stage. Harry Maguire's future could have further impact, says Laurie Whitbum. And here's a bit of realism. United like Kim and Jay. They've, they've, you know, they've, they've looked at him. He's top of the set about list. They've had some talks with him. But they've got to sell Harry Maguire to make this happen. Essentially, Laurie Whitwell is saying, for us to get Kim and Jay, we've got to sell Harry Maguire. And believe it or not, guys, there's a chance we don't sell Harry Maguire. Now, Ten Hag wants rid of Harry Maguire. United have kind of agreed to sell Harry Maguire. But Maguire is quite comfortable at United. Now, you think captain of United, fourth, fifth choice centre back, surely you leave United. If you're the fourth, fifth choice centre back ahead of the Euros, you know, surely you leave United. But apparently, Maguire's weighing up whether to leave United or stay. He's quite happy here. He's happy here because he's on 200k a week and he's not going to get that anywhere else. If you're the captain of our club and you're fifth choice centre back and you, you want to stay because we, we're the only team that's going to pay you this money when you could leave, prove everyone wrong about you and get our starting space in the Euros. And it shows about the lack of ambition of our captain. If Maguire decides to stay, he's an absolute melt who doesn't care about his career and just cares about money and wants an easy payday. He should be proving everyone wrong. He should be going to another club and he should be getting back in the England squad for the Euros. I mean, he is in the England squad, but if he doesn't play, Southfield will probably still pick him, actually. But you know what I mean? Like, Maguire apparently, you know, undecided on his future. Maguire should go. Ten Hag's told you he doesn't want you. He's not going to play you. He wants to sign another centre-back. So I don't know why he wants to stay at United after he's barely played this season. Anyway, what was said by Talk Sport? Talk Sport said Newcastle are tracking Manchester United target Kim Min Jae. Kim has a £42 million release clause, which Eric Ten Hag and United are keen to activate. So it's said that Newcastle are also looking at Kim and Jay on top of United. 42 million release scores were both keen to activate. Now, I think if we sell Maguire and it gets to July and Kim and Jay hasn't done a new contract with Napoli, I think United go into July and they activate that Kim and Jay release clause. But if United are going to faff about and do what United do and be an absolute mess and an absolute disaster glass throughout the whole transfer window... I wouldn't be shocked if we missed our opportunity to activate his release clause and Newcastle swoop in because we're absolutely unorganised. And then we have Italian sources coming out and saying Kim Moon Jae has left Naples and will not return. He is now heading to South Korea for military training and after that he will travel to Manchester to join United. But it's like Italian sources saying he's chosen United, he's going to go to United, he's got an agreement with United but... He doesn't, and it does make me worry that the more and more that comes out of Italian sources, especially when they reference the crazy wages United are reportedly giving him, does make me worry that Man United could potentially be used to get Kim and Jay a big new lucrative contract. Now, we do know that the number one priority is strike, followed by midfielder, but Ten would like to add a centre-back and goalkeeper to the ranks, and that might depend on the amount of money we raise throughout. So you sell Maguire, you get Kim and Jay, you sell Dean Henderson, potentially a David Raya is going to, you know, could cost the same price that Forrest will have to play for Dean Henderson. Now, it was said by Sky Sports today that Manchester United and Tottenham are reluctant to pay the 40 million fee being demanded by Brentford for David Raya. Both clubs are interested in signing him this summer. There has been no contact with Brentford yet. So David Raya, one year left on his contract, he will leave Brentford, that is confirmed. United and Spurs in Peru, I think Chelsea are going to be quite interested in him as well. Um, but they say £40 million, but he's got one year left on his contract. United and Spurs want £30 million. I think we could beat Spurs to him just because we are in the Champions League and we're United. Um, but nothing, no contract or any, contact or anything yet. United just keeping an eye on that one. I mean, the major goalkeeper we are linked to is Diogo Costa. I do think he's our number one priority in terms of the keeper. We're always linked to Diogo Costa. Uh, but I don't know if we can afford him. He's going to be twice the price of David Raya. It was also said by Mike... Uh, not Mike Keegan, by Sky, that Manchester United want two dock keepers and De Gea is not sure to be number one, which is true. You know, Ten Hag said De Gea might not be number one next season. 
And I think it's clear that Tenog wants to move to Heron, but he knows he's got to get a new striker in midfielder. He doesn't know the budget. And I think this is why Tenog's getting really frustrated in the transfer window and with, and with the takeover and with the ownership and all of that, because he's, he's got a lot to do. He wants to get about 10 players out and about five players in. And United are just doing their usual faff about be slow and the takeover's delaying it even more. And when you see, you know, Liverpool sign McAllister already, Arsenal going to get someone brilliant like Declan Rice. You know, when you see loads of this stuff going about, it's so... So annoying and frustrating to be a night fan. Anyway, that's the latest news today. Hopefully we get some more updates on the takeover for today. I will be back with a video or a live stream tonight about 6, 7 p.m. So please do subscribe down below, share the video. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.